Good morning, everyone. This is uh, Lori Scott. I'd like to welcome you to our Hawk Talk session this morning. Today we'll be talking about GStreamer and its capabilities on the Hawkboard open source platform. Your presenter today is Todd Fisher from Ridge Run. During the presentation, the phone line will be a muted bridge. At the conclusion of Todd's presentation, we'll unmute the bridge and you'll have an opportunity to either verbalize your questions or you'll have an opportunity to type in your questions into the chat window of your WebEx window. I'm about to put, turn the mute the bridge line now. Presentation mode is now enabled. Todd, the floor is yours. Thanks so much, Lori. Hi, thanks for joining us for this Hawk Talk today. My name is Todd Fisher. I'm in charge of engineering at Ridge Run. We specialize in streaming audio and video solutions on TI chips using GStreamer technology. One of the solutions that we have uh, runs quite well on the Hawk board, and I'm going to tell you a little bit about what we've been doing. In this presentation, we're going to be talking about um, what GStreamer is. We can go to the next slide. About why the Hawk board is such a great platform for running GStreamer and also about some examples of how you can get your algorithm running on GStreamer as what we call a pipeline element. And then I'll give you some more examples that I have thought up that might allow you to get some ideas on how to take advantage of all the neat IOs and capabilities of the Hawk board for doing streaming data through the DSP. Next slide. So why is this an interesting problem to be working on? Well, I really like the Hawk board because it has so many great IOs. We can hook up a big hard disk on the SATA interface. We can have removable storage on a secure digital card. We can have all sorts of data capture and um, data consumption devices that we can plug into USB. We have wonderful networking support. The other IOs like SPI and I2C can have chips that allow you to um, get data or put your data there. There's a programmable real-time unit that you can implement your own hardware handshake to some external device. And then there are some more conventional streaming interfaces like audio and video, both input and output. So with all of these great IOs, what can we do so we can get our streaming data from one of these IOs, route it through the floating point DSP, the C67, and then have it go to one of the other IOs on the Hawk board. How can we make that easy? How can we make that fast? And how can we make it efficient so we can share the load between the ARM and the C67 DSP on a Hawk board? Well, let's see what some of the options are. Next slide. So we have GStreamer running on the Hawk board. GStreamer, if you're not familiar with that, is typically associated with audio and video streaming. Um, I use a Ubuntu desktop computer, and it has GStreamer as the standard mechanism for doing audio and video. It's very common. It's been around, I think, about 12 years now. Um, and one of the great things about it is for the Hawk board, the standard Linux audio, which is the advanced Linux sound architecture, or called ALSA, is well supported for Hawk board um, audio in and audio out. And the Linux, the video for Linux 2 is also supported on Hawk board, so we can get video data and we can pass it out uh, through the video out mechanisms that are available. And in addition to this, we have what we call the DMAI plugin, which is the DaVinci Multimedia Architecture Interface. And that allows us to easily get the data from the GStreamer pipeline, pass it through the digital signal processor, and then ARM side so we can send the data somewhere. And why do we want to do this? Well, it allows us to share the workload between the ARM and the DSP. GStreamer is a streaming media framework. Again, 
We oftentimes think about this in an audio and video format, but we can actually stream any data because GStreamer supports the concept of capabilities where not only is it streaming the data, but it has the necessary out-of-band information so that all of the pieces that make up this pipeline that are processing the data know what the data is. So if you want to take data from some other sensor and it's not conventional um, audio data or video data, GStreamer is still a framework that could be useful for allowing that data to pass through. There are um, at least 200 plugins available. I did a quick test on my Hawkboard, and it has 100 and 120 of those plugins loaded onto my Hawkboard at the minute, at the moment, and there are over 394 um, elements that will transform the data or source or sync the data, and that's available today on a Hawkboard. When GStreamer came out, it was thought to be mostly related to getting some data, processing it, and then sending it out. But it's become quite a bit more sophisticated than that. Specifically, um, there's all sorts of support for networking and mixing data streams together, like taking audio and video and putting it in a container, like a MP4 container, an AVI container, and then it also has capabilities to automatically handle how data is supposed to be processed. So if we look at how to think about GStreamer from a technical point of view, there's a terminology associated with GStreamer, just like most technologies, and I'm going to introduce the, the five or six key terms. So you want to think about GStreamer as having an overall pipeline. And this pipeline is made up of elements. And these elements, the first element in the pipeline is called the source element. And then all the elements in the pipeline in the middle are um, called filters. And then the last one is called the sync. So the data comes from a source, it goes through some filters, and it goes out the sync. If you're familiar with a Unix command line, it's very similar to pipes on a on a Linux command line, like you can cat a file, and then you can grep the file, then you can run sed on, on the data, and you can create um, a pipe in Linux. They use that same model in GStreamer, and here we call it a pipeline. The um, other elements, can you go back a couple, Lori, uh, the, uh, uh, to the elements, the one that has elements is the first word? Thank you. What uh, <laughs> uh, GStreamer overview, yeah. So in addition to uh, these pipelines, you can actually put multiple pipelines um, together. So for instance, um, you might be wanting to process audio on one and video on another, for example. And so um, a pipeline they just call a bin. And when you have these elements in the pipeline, each element has some what are called paths. And the paths are things that either consume data or produce data. So if I'm a filter, let's say I'm encrypting uh, data, I'm an encryption filter, so I could get data in my sync pad that allows me to absorb the data from the element before me in the pipeline, and then I encrypt it, and then I'm going to pass it out, one, out a source pad so that it can be routed to the next element in the pipeline. And so the notion of pads comes in, and there you can have multiple pads per element. So for example, if I'm taking audio data and video data and combining them in an AVI uh, container, for example, I would have two sync pads, one for audio and one for video, and one source pad, which is where the AVI encapsulated data is going out. So that's the notion of pads. Capabilities I've mentioned. With capabilities, we're describing what um, the data is that is flowing through uh, the pipeline at this particular point. And so it might be PCM audio data, or yeah, it's measuring some sort of environmental condition. You could describe the, that capability as how many bits per sample, how many samples per second, um, the encoding order, big Indian, little Indian, things like that. And by having the capabilities, that allows us to have 
independent elements where the element just looks at the capabilities to understand the data format so it can process it properly. And then one of the really cool things about GStreamer is it is um, more or less hot pluggable. It's dynamic. All of the elements get grouped together in a collection of plugins, and these plugins are just simply shared libraries. And so GStreamer has this notion, the GStreamer framework has a notion that it can inspect these plugins to find out about the elements. So you can add capabilities to GStreamer without having to rebuild the whole thing and link the whole thing together. You just add another library which is a collection of elements, and in GStreamer, that's called a plugin. So, for example, there is the TI plugin for GStreamer, which is based on DMAI that I mentioned previously, and that um, understands some specifics on how to um, output data in an efficient manner so the hardware accelerators can take advantage on it for video data, how to route the data through the digital signal processor, and a couple of other elements that are associated with that plugin. So we were able to add the TI hardware specific plugin to the general GStreamer framework because of its ability to support the notion of plugins. 